Another industry that has seen an increase in uptake or use of its products during the COVID-19 pandemic is insurance. Of that, one key component has been the life insurance aspect. David Muhire Nyangenzi is the head of corporate business at Sonarwa Life Insurance, and he joined us earlier for more. One of the first, um, I'd say everyone's been impacted by COVID-19, but uh, in the life insurance industry in Rwanda, one of the things we've felt the most has been um, in terms of new businesses and risk selection. When it comes to getting new clients, new client acquisition has been a lot harder because uh, people are working from home. Life insurance is something that uh, a lot of the time you sell uh, when you meet someone face to face. So it becomes a lot harder when you're uh, trying to sell this product uh, to people that are actually not there. Another thing has been uh, incre an increase in claims. So. The pandemic has brought about a lot of uncertainty, a lot of layoffs and job cuts in the economy. So uh, on the aspect of the pension in life insurance, we've had a lot of people come in and uh, either halt their payments or just claim. So I'd say this is some of the things we are facing at the moment. Right. You know, we've seen um, worldwide so many you know, statistics of, of people dying, has that changed the industry in any way? No, actually what has happened uh, with the COVID has um, created a lot of awareness uh, when it comes to the public. So because of a lot of uh, volatility within the market uh, and the economy, uh, we've uh, noticed that people have actually seen the importance of life uh, insurance especially people who had um, education policies, for example, or credit life policies, uh, they can lean back and uh, this, use these policies as a cushion for times like this. So that's one thing we're starting to notice um, after the pandemic like started. Right. Has the pandemic impacted at all the price of life insurance? Um, not necessarily. It hasn't. Um, in fact, we're still, uh, we've made a few adjustments. Uh, we're more uh, careful when um, taking on a risk. But apart from that, uh, we, the prices have always remained the same. Life insurance, a lot of the time, is based on someone's age and their income. So we don't really look at the pandemic side that much. Um, however, it does affect some products when we are calculating premiums for you. Uh, if someone's going in to get uh, credit from a, a bank and we're going to mitigate that risk together for, uh, for the bank, uh, we're going to have to put in the factor of the pandemic sometimes, depending on someone's age. Yeah. Right. You know, insurance penetration on the continent and in the region especially is still quite low. Um, what do you think can be done to increase the number of insured Africans? So actually what you're saying is absolutely right. Um, the first thing we need to do is, as insurance companies, we need to increase awareness and e educate the masses. Uh, and not just by doing that, we also need to create and develop products that will meet the needs of um, the public. One thing I've noticed is um, we find a lot of times in insurance we're selling products that we've been selling for the last 20 years. I think one thing as insurance companies we need to do is um, come up and be innovative and come up with new products that actually fit the current market that we're working in. Another thing is to involve different stakeholders. Um, sometimes we work with uh, government agencies and other, uh, other institutions to create the financial literacy. I believe if um, we work together, we can improve the insurance penetration, not just in Rwanda, but in Africa as a whole. Right. You mentioned creating uh, specific products to meet the needs of the public. Can you um, give us an example yes. of one that would be suitable for Rwanda? Actually, right now, um, we're working on um, a product. Um, well, uh, currently, what we can do is uh, we can come up with products. Um, a lot of Rwandans are becoming homeowners. Let's say that. So we need to, we are coming up with products uh, that not only just safeguard the property, 
but let's find a, a two-in-one that safeguards uh, the individual as well for times like these. Um, I can't go into a lot of detail because this is something that you will see in a few in a few weeks. But um, our main focus right now as well is we're focusing on SMEs. So these are a lot. These are companies that were hard hit by the pandemic and the shut and the lockdown. So these are some of the we're coming up with products that we believe will be suitable for them and uh, help with business continuity. Right. Uh, David, what's your outlook for the sector um, in the region as we continue to live with the pandemic? So one thing I've, I've noticed with other people in the industry is uh, pandemics create a fertile ground for future sales opportunities. So with uh, what people have become awake and they're aware that uh, there's a pandemic, but how do I safe safeguard myself? from any uh, impacts that uh, any blowouts that might come up from the pandemic so we're using this uh, to teach people now we're used taking this opportunity to teach people on the savings culture because uh, life insurance has an aspect of uh, pensions complementary pension schemes so we are taking this time now to go out educate the masses and have um, people uh, create buffers for when uh, times like this happen again.